guru Jeffrey to his friends, <laughs> Jeffrey Prince. And who is Jeffrey? Well, Jeffrey is a mentor and author helping SMEs to grow their businesses. He brings out that small spark inside you, turning it into a blazing inferno. He empowers you to do the same by releasing your full potential and drawing out your own dormant and natural abilities. And not only that, but he creates results. So, Jeffrey, I turn the floor over to you. <laughs> That's very really kind of you. Thanks very much. Well, first of all, you know, I'd like, I'd very much like to thank Liz um, because I really enjoyed that. And David, uh, you've stolen one hell of a lot of things I was going to say. So I think I'll just throw my bit of paper away and just shoot from the hip. Um, first of all, as a dyslexic myself, wow. but didn't find out until I was turned 50 that I was a dyslexic. And I carried that burden on my shoulders, ashamed that I couldn't spell. I could speak all right, but I couldn't spell. I couldn't read properly to my children as they were growing up because I was ashamed of it. But it wasn't until I married Jane back in 2000, that she was the one who turned around to me and said, do you realize you're dyslexic? And I said, no, but immediately that was a turning point in my life. And I also know that there is another person on here who I have great respect for, who is also a dyslexic, but went on to get a, an honors degree at the university last year. So as a dyslexic, we should not be ashamed that we are dyslexic. We're slow learners, yes, but we catch on quickly if we have the right mindset. And the mindset is everything. A little bit of history. I was born in 1943 when a bomb dropped in the back uh, of, of uh, my house in the grounds in, uh, in the farmer's field. My mother refused to uh, have me born in the air raid shelter, so I was actually born on the curry tile floor of the kitchen. That's probably why I've got a flat head and I am a very determined person. Moving on, I had terrible difficulty at my first school. As I've just said, I couldn't string sentences together. I was ashamed. And it wasn't until I got into my secondary school and there was a teacher there who, using phrases that David has taught, educari being the word, the Latin word to draw out, she insisted that the best way to help children is to draw out that latent fire in their belly, what they've got inside them. And in my, you know, I, I just looked it up, I couldn't remember the page, but in page five, or on page five of my book, Success, The Choice Is Yours, a quote I feel very appropriate would be uh, by a Jesuit um, motivator, alleged the attributed of uh, Francis of Xavier, give me the child, uh, sorry, give me the child till B is uh, it, uh, till he's seven, and I will give you the man. And they are true words, you know. They are the most informative years. I didn't get any education. I got education. Uh, I was kicked out of school at fifteen, as we all were back in those days in the fifties, and I went into engineering uh, because I was good with my hands. I was good with my hands, I was good at PE, and I was uh, good at singing, and that's about my lot. But the fact of the matter is I served my apprenticeship at the English Electric, came out as an engineer, went into the parachute regiment, got invalided out uh, because of, of, of a bad jump out of a helicopter, would you believe? Uh, at, um, and consequently, what the hell am I going to do? Well, at the age of 12, I was very good at going around the bomb sites in Liverpool 
picking up bicycles, wheels, cogs, saddles, frames, taking them back to my house in uh, West Derby, uh, and putting them together and flogging them. I lost my father when I was 10, so I never had a senior person there, a senior male person. So I had to do everything myself and I thoroughly enjoyed it. That's when I got hooked on making things, being able to do things and being able to sustain my life. So my first business was at the age of 23. And that was a cottage in Dinneollin in North Wales that I converted into an adventure playground or adventure centre, it shouldn't be a playground, where I did climbing, canoeing, walking, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't make a single penny out of it, but by golly, did I have a wonderful time helping other people. I have taken blind children up Idwell slabs and they could thoroughly enjoyed it very much. I've taken deaf, uh, deaf children as well climbing in North Wales, or it did in those days. Brilliant. But it didn't last for long. I had to do something. So I went to work for a company, a London-based company, Arwood Commercial Investigators, and we collected and looked after companies only bringing business debt in. And I learned one hell of a lot there. And the most important thing I learned there is most people who have a debt problem, there is a reason behind it in business. And one of the things I learned very much then was don't kick a man when he's down. Find out the reason why he's down and try and help him. And that's exactly what I did. I then went on to have my own uh, successful business, which was absolutely superb because I was helping people from the length and breadth of this country. And in those days, I used to have a, a, a Citroen 23 Safari estate and I had an Urkel telephone in it. And it was about that big in the boot of the car with a handheld radio and you had six sections. So anywhere around the country, I would go onto it, turn the dial and say, this is Jet 606. Can you get me a telephone number? Blah, 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 blah. Tell them I'm going to be late. And that was the way we did it. That was way, way, way back in the 70s, the early 70s. I got bored after my brother died and we came over to live in Wallasey, New Brighton, in the Wirral. But I was a fanatic because after doing my climbing, doing my parachuting, I became a diver, a subaqua diver, because I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, even to this day, uh, you know, I'm an advanced instructor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all that jazz. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, one of the things that I loved doing was trying all the time to help people. But I wanted a new boat. So I went down to a company in Birkenhead and asked them, can you... This is the design of what I want. This is the mold of what I want. Can you put one together? And they said, yes. So I, I had all the, uh, the uh, gel coat, uh, fiberglass, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, delivered on the Friday, 2,000 pounds worth of it. Monday morning, I go down to uh, the docks where the, the company Hughcraft was uh, sighted to find the padlocks on the doors. Was the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board hadn't been paid for six months. Cutting a long story short, by 4.30 in the afternoon, I bought the business, paid the debts, and I started to run that business. And we got it to a, just over a million pound turnover, which wasn't bad in 1970-odd uh, for a 33-year-old. But one of the problems was uh, I was a pig-headed sort of a bitch and I wouldn't listen to people. And when the... Uh, and when the um, unions came in and sat in front of me and turned around and said, you can't sack these people. I said, well, I've sacked them. They said, well, we'll close your business down. And this is when the shipbuilders and boilermakers union at Camel Erds had tremendous strength. And they, you know, there were 11,000 people in that place. They closed me down all right. I put 30 people out on the dole 
and I ended up having to sign on myself. And on the Monday, I thought, sod, this regain of soldiers, I'm not, I'm not going to stand in, Dom in Dominic House with all my employees there trying to draw the dough. So I saw an advert in the Liverpool Echo that evening. Join Chris Gator, room 2303, 2, 230 at the Adelphi Hotel in Liverpool. I was there at 10 o'clock on the dot when he opened the doors. On the Wednesday, I had the job. I went down to Swaddling Coast. And from a brand new Volvo estate with less than 800 miles on the clock, I ended up with a two year clapped house old Chevette that I had to drive around. It took me three years, but I became director of Arrow Chemicals in the end. What I'm trying to say there is basically if you're down, don't think you're down. Look in the mirror. And I've, I've said the same to a lot of people. And look at yourself very much in the mirror and say, I can do it. Not necessarily I love you, but I did this evening. She got me doing it. But the fact is, you are capable. Whatever you can do, you can do. Whatever you say you can do, you will do. Whatever you say you can't do, you won't do. That is what life is about. Anyway, going on from that, after that uh, went and I went with Arrow Chemicals, I then thought, well, I can make more money doing this myself. So I, start, I formed my own chemical company. I left Arrow Chemicals, started a chemical company up, and by golly, did I enjoy myself. You know, <laughs> being quite blunt with you, those were the days you could make 200 and 300% profit on chemicals because nobody knew how you made them up. Uh, but then we had Kosh involved, so therefore things changed at the time. Halfway through that, uh, I decided that one of the things that I would do uh, is really to get out of the chemical industry. I had a 158-year-old house at the time, uh, and I decided, rightly or wrongly, to convert it into a hotel. So I sold half the chemical company invested £120,000 and converted my old house into a four crown hotel that is still there to this day, which I'm very proud to say. And by the way, my son, I have a son-in-law who still works in my, in the old chemical company that's been sold on, 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 on several times. As Carol knows, and a couple of other people know, I've had a few little hiccups on the way. And I don't mean business hiccups, I mean health hiccups. In 2004, I was diagnosed with a problem heart. And within 24 hours, they'd whipped me over to Broad Green Hospital, where they diagnosed that I had three of my uh, tubes completely blocked. Uh, and probably if I didn't have an operation, I'd only have a, a little while to live. So that was the second time in my life that I was told I was going to be dead. Anyway, as usual, I proved them wrong. I had the heart operation. They said one in a hundred people, one person in a hundred who has this bypass, quadruple bypass operation will be dead. Well, I wasn't. I got onto it, picked myself up, fought on, opened up another business and carried on doing that. And from that day, I started teaching and helping and supporting, guiding through training. I did the business startup courses for the Liverpool Chamber of Commerce for quite a few years until guess what? The doctors turned around and said I had chronic myeloid leukemia and I only had five years to live. And I thought, oh, sod this for a game of soldiers. This is ridiculous. Twice in my life. Go away. Anyway, look at me now. It's 2022. I'm still here. I'm still a pain in the ass to you lot, and I enjoy it very much indeed. Why and how am I here? Very simply, I would do half an hour's exercise every single morning in my study, overlooking the River Mersey as the sh ships are sailing up and down. Well, not as many as we used to, but still quite a few. And what else do I do? I help people. I mentor people. I write books, I write ebooks. I run a networking meeting on a, every single Wednesday. 
And that, that motivation and networking pe uh, group is one that I started up co when COVID kicked in last year. It was something to keep my brain going. And I knew what to do because I'd run networking groups uh, back in uh, 2006, seven and eight around the Merseyside area. So I had an idea of what it was like. But what I did do is in my blog that I've been doing since 2009, and you can see all the blogs on my website going back to 2009, if you're daft enough to want to look at them. But the fact is that they are there. And in that Monday morning blog, as a few people on here will testify because they get my blogs, I asked three questions of that blog. I never know what the blogs are going to be until the Saturday and I decide to sit down in front of the computer and do something. And on the Wednesday, we break, go into breakout rooms and we look at those blogs and the, they discuss them. They don't listen to me. They hear enough of me anyway. What they do is talk these questions through themselves. Now, to me, this is one way of empowering people. My book, Empowerment, uh, says this because I love empowering people to do things. It gives me great pleasure in supporting, guiding and helping people. And yes, OK, I'm 80, what, 88, 89 in April. I want to be here in another 10, 15 years time. And I will be. Because I'm bloody well determined to be. Because the fact of the matter is, the more people I can mentor, and when a mentee is surpassed by the mentor, that gives me great pleasure. When anybody is on my business startup course, which a few people are, I get great pleasure in being the school teacher, looking at the exercises they do and going through them. And by the way, David, your report was excellent in comparison to mine. Mine was terrible. Most of the time it was he could do better. And that was written across all the things. But I'm not a hard person, so I never say this to any of my People are on the business startup course. I help them to do it the same way that that English teacher taught me educari, educari to draw out. So I try to draw the best out of everybody. Carol said that fire in the belly is something that we all have. The problem is with a lot of us, it's been diminished. It's been diminished by the negaholics around us, those horrible people who say you can't, you haven't got the brains, you haven't got the money, you haven't got the education. Load of utter codswallop. We all have that ability to do it. We've all got to overcome all those horrible things people say about us. I've started two businesses off with less than a hundred pounds. The chemical business only had, I had a ruddy great house. Don't get me wrong, it was a big house, but no brass in the bank. Not with four children to bring up and later on a fifth one as well. Now I'm, the, I, 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 I'm in the marvellous position of having 11 grandchildren and four great grandchildren. And one of my grandchildren has just graduated from Sheffield University, which makes me feel very old indeed. But the fact is, all I'm saying, please, I love talking, supporting and helping and guiding people. I will put my information into the chat. And if anybody would like to have a one-to-one -one with me, I'm one of these people that uses Calendly because I don't believe in people ringing me up, can I have a meeting with you? Sending me a text, can I have a meeting with you? Sending me an email, can I have a meeting with you? Because it's backwards and forwards. So I just say to them, go on to McCallanly on my website, book a 15 minute discovery. If I like what we're talking about, we'll do it for half an hour. If I don't like, what, what, <laughs> if I don't like the cut of the jib, then I'm sorry. I'll only make it probably quarter of an hour because I'm a choosy little bugger. 
but there we are. I work with people who really want to learn. I'm not here to help and support and guide people who are doing it to touch their forelock and thinking it's worthwhile having a go. I run my, uh, at the end of this month, I'm putting together a market research masterclass workshop that I'll be offering 50% off to all people who join this year, you know, this month. Uh, details you'll find on the website. So more, more than likely, we'll see you on a one-to-one. -one. I'd like to thank Carol for inviting me. Sorry, Carol, I was ill last time, but unfortunately, occasionally uh, having Luke, uh, you know, CML, it knocks you a little bit and it knocked me that particular day. Doesn't very often do it because I really kick it into touch all the time because it, it's just a pain, you know. Uh, as long as I take my eight tablets in the morning, my eight tablets at night, inject once a day, I can keep going. I'll finish on that point. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please contact me, you know, if you'd like to. Uh, and thank you again. Oh, Jeffrey, you are amazing. I could give you a big hug right now. <laughs> <laughs> a, bear, a bear hug. <laughs> you are truly, truly, truly. Um, someone described you as a baby when you quoted your age. I think it was Liz, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You are amazing. You Thank don't you. fit into a mold. <laughs> you broke that mold. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love, I love the way you think. Well, thanks you very much. I can do it attitude, no matter what. The health well, challenges you've been through yeah. and come through and still battling in some instances. Yeah. My, uh, uh, my, 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 my tag, which I put on myself about 30 years ago with, and it's on my website, your attitude dictates your altitude. And that's it. If you've yeah. got the right attitude, you always get what you want. Yeah. Excellent. And you haven't allowed age to define you. No, Liz. No. I loved it when David said, I, I am 38 years young. I said, my God to myself, 38 years young. I wish I could say that. Uh, I'm certainly 88 years young, David. So, you know. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Have we got time if anybody wants to ask any questions? No, at the end. Once Alison okay. has been our right, right, final speaker, right. then we'll open up Thank the you. floor for questions. Brilliant.